Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 10 books that I read so far in April. I did read 10 books so far this month. Today is the 16th of April. I don't know why I almost said February. What is going on? <laughs> Anyway, I have read 10 books so far this month, but before we get into that, I wanted to mention a product or a few products that were sent my way that I wanted to shout out because I think they're amazing. So this company reached out to me on Instagram. This is Candles and Kindness. And here is the back with all of the information if you'd love to see that. But um, her Instagram is gonna be linked down below if you wanna go check that out. She's super sweet. Um, but she decided to send me a few things and I also have a discount code. It's Ava10. Her Instagram is going to be linked down below as well as my discount code is going to be written there. It's Ava10. Anyway, she was like, pick out two candles and a wax melt of any kind and I'll send them your way. And I'm in love with these scents, especially oh, one of these to die for. I love all of them, but one of them I could smell for literally my entire life. So first is the wax melter. I picked a coffee date, which smells like hazelnut, coffee, vanilla, cream, and maple. It smells really good. Like, and it's perfect. I was telling her this because I just got a wax melter. So it's like amazing. Oh, that smells so good. It kind of also smells like butterscotch to me in a sense. And I love butterscotch, like butterscotch lollipops are everything. I know I sound like a grandma, but I'm not lying. Um, one that I picked out that I haven't lit yet, but it smells so good. This is Reading Nook. Oh, it smells so good. This one is vanilla, rum, sugar, buttercream, and spice. And all for candles, I'm pretty sure has like glitter in it too. It's so pretty. And it's one of those like fun, like unique wicks that I love. Like, oh, that smells so good. I had to obviously get one that says Reading Nook, but the cream of the crop to me that she said is like one of her favorites also is Scottish Highlands. Like, okay, so I have like a running thing with my uh, best friend, my sister, my mom. We love man candles and a man candle <laughs> is a candle that when you smell it, it smells like a sexy man. Like, <laughs> so this is what you call a man candle for sure. So this one is marine, camphor, lavender, cedarwood, and amber. Like, oh my gosh. It smells beautiful. Like this is what I expect Jamie Fraser to smell like. Oh my gosh. But I'm also getting like Rowan vibes also. There's no pine in here though, but I don't care. Oh, it smells so good. And yeah, I've already lit it, okay? It's also sparkly, so, oh, I'm obsessed. So be sure to use my code AVA10 down below. Like, I'm not getting anything out of this. I'm not getting any compensation, but I wanted to, like, shout these out because they smell so good, and I know a lot of y'all want good smelling candles, so be sure to go check out her site. It's amazing. It also came with, like, a little care card, too, like, how to properly take care of your candles, and I loved that, so... Um, that's it for this little interlude. We're not going to be getting into all the books that I've read so far in April. A book that has gotten a lot of time from me in April that I haven't finished yet is actually a fan fiction. It's quite long and it's kind of like my workbook whenever I'm on break or I have a little bit of downtime or a planning period where I don't have to do anything else. I'll read some of this fan fiction and it's called Good Again. I believe that's the title of it. And I have been wanting a fan fiction like this or just a book like this for forever. Like many people in March, I decided to rewatch The Hunger Games because they were all on uh, Netflix, but I own all of them on Amazon. So I don't know why I decided to watch them on Netflix. And anyway, it was like a resurgence. It was like a resurgence going on because they were on Netflix. And so I was like, I need to rewatch these. They are amazing. So I did, and I grew up with the Hunger Games, obviously, and with the movies. So I feel like they're just so nostalgic to me. I love them, and Peta and Katniss are some of my favorite, one of my favorite couples ever from when I was younger. I won't spoil anything in case like you haven't read the Hunger Games books, but I've always wanted more content that takes place in between the end of Mockingjay and the epilogue in Mockingjay. Like I wanted to see 
that gap like I wanted to see what happened between some of the characters specifically two of them like I wanted that so bad that's what this fan fiction is it's about that I don't want to spoil anything in case you haven't read the Hunger Games or watch them I don't want to spoil it but like it's about those two people and how they come together to the epilogue of Mockingjay I'm like 46% of the way through this I've read so much of this it is very long but I'm obsessed I am obsessed it's something I really needed so <laughs> I'm slowly making my way through this and it's taken a large chunk of my rating time this book has so um that's why I haven't read as many books as I normally do so far in April it's because this book has taken a lot of my time but I'm so far really enjoying it I thought I'd mention that here in case you wanted to pick up a Hunger Games fan fiction I'll link the um like website link to the fanfiction down below. It's off of AO3 and you can just download it onto your um, Kindle, which is nice. Okay, the first book that I actually finished in the month of April is Throne of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. This is the last book in the Horde Kings of Drakkar series. And I don't wanna spoil anything, so I'm not gonna talk about this book too much, but this was a buddy read with Victoria over at Victoria's Romance Reads. Victoria and I buddy read quite a few books in the series. I think we read from book three to this one, we buddy read one a month and it was so much fun buddy reading these books with her. I'll give a very brief summary though. Our heroine in here is half human, half Drakkar alien. And if like the alien emperor ever found out that she existed, she'd probably be killed. And so these nuns basically um, keep her in, under this mountain with them uh, her whole life. Then a horde king comes to them for aid because there's something going on throughout the whole entire series and he needs help defeating this thing. And while he's there, he ends up taking the heroine with him like away. And it's like a traveling book and they end up falling for each other and all that jazz. So that's all I'm going to say in this one. It was the last book of the series. You see past couples pop up as well and them helping like defeat the certain thing going on in here. I thought it was a great conclusion to the series overall. It wasn't my favorite. That's still probably going to go to book four. Oh, something dinged. Anyway, it's probably going to go to book four in the series, but Overall, I thought it was a great read. For tropes, let's see. I listed Alien Romance, Faded Mates. This one is a Faded Mate one. Not every book in this series is Faded Mates. Um, Faded Mates, a uh, female alien. Um, there's magic and there's like a royalty aspect in here as well. Then I finally read Hush Darling by Avery Kingston. This has been on many a TBR since I got this book in September at Wanderlust. I got to meet her and she was so stinking sweet. I got like three of her books and look, it's like signed and personalized. Like, oh, this book was great. It was a great read. I knew I was gonna love it. So this is the romance between Gia and Tanner. So um, Gia in here is on the run for her, from her abusive husband. She just found out she was pregnant and she's like, I cannot raise this baby. I cannot have a baby in the same household as the man who has almost killed me and has beat me throughout our whole entire marriage. So she decides to fake her death and run away. While she's running away in like her car, her car gets stuck in like a snow drift or something during a snowstorm. And the closest thing nearby is this cabin. And Tanner just so happens to own said cabin and own a few cabins on the property um, where people like can rent from him and stay in. Tanner in here is our hero and he was born deaf. So you have that representation as well. And I think it was done pretty well. Like I, I thought so, but I would love to hear from somebody who is deaf. Let me know what you thought of this representation, please. And so when he finds Gia at first, he's like very shocked. He has become the town recluse. There has been some past traumatic things that have happened to him in his life. And he just stays with his dog in his home in the middle of nowhere and just drinks himself to oblivion every night because he has just like been so defeated emotionally, physically. Like he has gone through something horrible. I don't want to spoil it. But when he finds Gia, he decides like he's got to buck up and make himself better to help this woman. But there are some secret keeping in here. He does not know that Gia's on the run at first. He does not know that Gia is pregnant. So like there's a lot going on in here and this woman is very scared and kind of worried about men obviously because of what she's experienced. So they don't get on the best of feet right away, but they end up falling for each other. And I thought it was super sweet and beautiful at times. And there is like a little bit of a suspense element in here, which wasn't my favorite. That was why this book was not five stars for me. It was not my favorite part of the book. And I found it to just happen really quick and it wasn't 
all that fleshed out in my opinion, but everything else I loved. There is a language barrier in here because um, Tanner is deaf and Gia does not speak sign language. So like she's slowly learning sign. For trigger warnings in this book, you have domestic abuse, guns, kidnapping, and death of a loved one. There are many memorable quotes in here for me, but one that I wrote in my review is, with that one kiss, she stole my breath and my heart and breathed life back into me. Mm. Love it. Okay, so for rep, there's obviously deaf rep. The hero is deaf. Uh, tropes, there's, it's a book with pets. Archie in here is so sweet. I love him. Archie, best dog ever. Okay, hidden identity. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier. You have a reclusive hero. There's the pregnancy trope. There's a suspense element. Um, it takes place during a snowstorm. And you have a widower in here. So I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. Next, I ended up reading Her Wicked Proposal by Lauren Smith. This is the third book in the League of Rogue series, and I think I'm gonna end it here, y'all. <laughs> Every book in the series has gotten a 3.5 stars or lower from me, and this one just really left me with a bad taste in my mouth when I finished this book. This book sadly is not something I enjoyed and I will not be continuing with this series. I was really looking forward to reading this book because our hero in here in book two of the series, he was injured and he is now blind. And I was like, okay, you have disability representation. I really wanna get to that book. So that's why I read book one and book two in the series is because I wanted to get to book three. And I don't think the representation was done well. I don't love stories where the disability is miraculously healed at the end. Sorry for the spoiler, y'all, but like, really? Like, really? There was no reason and no, like, it was just out of the blue. He bonks his head again and now he can see. And I'm just like, why did that have to be the ending? This man was learning to love himself again after becoming disabled and he was like totally comfortable in his own skin by the end of the book. Why did the author have to bring his sight back? Like I don't understand what the point of that was. Like I don't, I was so mad. Okay and then another thing is like a few books in the series the heroines like when they get mad at the heroes they like slap them across the face. And I'm just like, that's abuse? <laughs> if a man did that to a woman, like, no. But if a woman does it to a man, like, that's okay? Hmm? Make it make sense for me. This was a marriage of convenience story where the heroine has to marry the hero because she's sick of all these men vying for her attention because her father just died and she has a, has a lot of money. And so they really want her to be their wife. And she's like, can you just marry me instead? I'm sick of these men getting all over me. So he marries her. But man, there were so many things in this book I did not, not care for. So I just didn't rate this book because I have no clue what I would even have rated it. So I did not leave a rating on Goodreads. Then I ended up reading Lovers by Fiona Cole. I'm meeting Fiona Cole at Book Bonanza and I've only read one or two of her books. I can't remember. So I read Voyeur, the first book in the Voyeur series in college. And that story has like a traumatic for me, a traumatic experience while reading that book. So it's taken me a while to get back into this series. It's nothing that the book did. It's like, someone may have listened to me listening to that book. And if you know what this book series is about, like, okay. Um, but yeah, this book series takes place in the voyeur like club. Okay, it's a certain type of club. Okay, so this one also didn't really work for me, unfortunately. This one centers around three people. You have one guy, who is engaged to this girl. And then this other guy over here who was best friends with this guy in college, okay? And they had a little hooky hookup after a game of truth or dare, but he's bi and he's always said he's straight. So after the little hooky hooky up, he freaks out and just ghosts him and they're not friends anymore. And so it's years later, they all have to three work together on a project. They do some all together stuff. So I thought this was gonna be a all three together book. And I felt like I was misled, cause it's not that. Like it, like the story isn't about the three of them like staying together and being a couple. Like that's not what this book is about. I don't wanna spoil it, but like I was let down cause I thought that's what it was gonna be and it wasn't. And I just felt like the author teased us for something that isn't there. Like I felt let down. So I gave this one 3.5 stars. It was fine. It was okay. 
I just wanted what I wanted and I didn't get it. Sorry, I'm pitching a fit. <laughs> Then I ended up reading A Little Slice of Hell by Cleo Evans. I'm not going to talk about this book here because it's going to be in a vlog that will come out towards the end of April. Um, you can guess what kind of vlog that is. Um, but yeah, that's going to be in that vlog. It's a short monster romance novella. I listened to the audio for this book. It's on any play if you want to check it out if you have any play. And I can't wait to listen to book two because the man they hired to narrate this book melt into a puddle. Like I... When researched to see what other books he's he's read, none. He's read no 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 other books. And I'm just like, you need to, because his voice is like butter, like like melt in your seat, can't get up. Like I can't wait for book two to come on any play because like I need that now, please, just so I can listen to his voice. Like I liked the book, I'm gonna talk about it in the vlog, but like the main attraction for me was this man everything. <laughs> Loving Goldie was my next read and it was another doozy, okay? I wanted to read this book because I think each novella in this series has disability or chronic illness or mental health representation, which is something I advocate for. So I was like, okay, love novellas, love the rep, so let's try them out. I was not a fan of this. This is about Goldie and Ford. They work at the same company. She was hired like six months ago. She had to go on medical leave for a few months though because she got a hysterectomy. Um, her endometriosis was flaring really bad and so she decided to get a hysterectomy. Um, so that was the representation of your uh, endometriosis, was, which wasn't even really mentioned at all. So that was a disappointment for me. Anyway, so Ford, her boss, ever since she sat for like her interview has been totally into her. So this is about him pursuing her. And I just felt like everything was lackluster. There was no development in like anything. And I gave this book two stars. I have a fantasy romance next. This is Restless Slumber by KJ Sutton. I did read a book off of my April TBR. Look at me reading off my TBR. Anyway, uh, this is the second book in the Fortuna Sworn series. So I did read Fortuna Sworn in a fantasy romance reading vlog. I'll link it down below. Um, but in that book, our heroine Fortuna, she is a nightmare, which like is a creature that's very rare. They're almost extinct, where if you physically touch someone's skin to skin, you can like figure out what their nightmare is and use that nightmare against them. Her brother has been lost for a few years and all of a sudden this mysterious man pops up out of nowhere and is like, hey, I can help you find your brother. I know where he is. In exchange, you have to marry me. And so it's about her going to his court and everything like that. There's like Faye involved and everything like that. So that was book one. And I, so I can't talk about what book two is about because it's book two. Um, I think there's going to be six books out in this series. And yeah, this was an entertaining read. I think I gave it 3.5 stars, if I remember correctly, 3.75. I said, I felt like there was a lot going on. It wasn't, that wasn't 100% relevant or needed in the story. Oh yes. Okay. So I did feel like this book sometimes read as fan fiction in some sorts like an overly long fan fiction which there's nothing wrong with that obviously I've been reading a fan fiction but what I mean is the story is like created chapter by chapter and it's just building off of each other I don't feel like it was very cohesive in certain aspects anyway I don't really know how to describe it but I felt like the author didn't really plan out everything as smoothly as I would have liked because like I just felt like there were things that were not relevant to the story in this book but I overall really enjoyed it and I can't wait to read the other books in the series and I'm going to be meeting this author in June so I'm very excited then I ended up reading my favorite book of the month so far so far it's my favorite book of the year this is The Coldest Winter by Brittany Jerry I received an arc of this book so I got to read it early like a week early and oh my gosh this book is beautiful I didn't think I'd like this book because it has like a student teacher element in it and as a teacher, I don't really love those kinds of books, but I feel like this book did it really well. If anyone can do it, Brittany can do it. This is the forbidden romance between Starlet and Milo. Both of them are dealing with very serious things in their life. And when they meet each other, they meet each other at a college party. They have a wonderful, very hot time together for the night. And then they are like, okay, I'll never see this person again, whatever, it was a one-time thing. And then they end up meeting each other in a different kind of circumstance and they realize, how forbidden that night was. Like they didn't realize it then, but they do now. And that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna leave you with because I wanna tease it a little bit. But Brittany's writing just leaves me gobsmacked every time I read one of her books. Like she is like a craftswoman. Like I love her books so much. Like she's able to weave such 
intricate, beautiful stories. This book is, I feel like, an ode to those who are living with and dealing with grief. I feel like Brittany writes grief so well, and both of these characters are dealing with familial death. That's all I'm gonna leave you with because I really wanna just leave you hanging, but know that this book is beautiful, it's amazing, it's my favorite book of the year so far, and I just adore it. There's a bunch of memorable quotes. I have like so many, I have never highlighted a book as much as I highlighted in this book. And I can't wait to get my physical copy because then I get to transfer my ebook highlights to my physical ones. Like I'm so excited. Okay, so um, let's pick one memorable quote. Okay, this one is from Starlet. She said, I liked his touch of warmth. I liked his blinks of pain. I liked how he reminded me of a roller coaster, terrifying yet thrilling and worth the price of admission. Oh my gosh, okay, I have to say another one. This one says, um, I see you Milo, even with my eyes closed. Like, <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, trigger warning, substance abuse, depression, topic of death, grief, death of a loved one. Um, tropes, tortured hero, it's emotional, it's forbidden, it's on Kindle Unlimited. You have an older woman in here, a few years older. There is the one bad trope. There is disability representation in here. Um, there is the tutoring trope. And this is definitely a winter read. I gave this book five out of five stars, obviously. Next, I have my DNF. This is Beneath the Scars by Melanie Moreland. I really wanted to pick up books. My author's going to Book Bonanza that I've never read from before. And I know Caitlin loves Melanie Moreland, but I think I have to pick up another book by her. I don't think Caitlin's read this book. According to Goodreads, she hasn't. But um, this, I, oh, this book started out so strong and at the 55% mark, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> so this book starts out with our heroine going to her best friend's beach house for like a little staycation to escape the world. She's a writer and she's experiencing not so great things with the media right now. So she decides to escape and go to her friend's beach house. Her friend gives her the keys and she's there by herself. There she ends up meeting her very reclusive, grumpy neighbor. Um, he's from England and turns out he has a bunch of scars on his face and he's very self-conscious about that. That's why he's become reclusive and a shut-in. It's because he doesn't want people to be scared of him or judge him for his scars. And at first he's very grumpy and mean towards her, um, but then they end up falling for each other very reluctantly, like he does. Like she's very interested in him right from the get-go. Um, I got to the 55% mark and these two had known each other for a week and had already been saying, I love you. And I was like, what? Like the book was starting out so good, but like the angst and the bickering and the banter, like it was so great at the beginning. And then to say like, I love you, like a week into knowing each other, like you don't know this person. You don't know, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> and in the book, she's literally like, oh, I know him. I know his soul. I know who he is. I'm like, you do not know this man. And he says the same thing about her. I'm like, you do not know this woman. You don't know her. <laughs> ah, I felt like he was falling in love with her because this was the first person to not ever like see his scars first and foremost when looking at him. And he's like, oh my gosh, I love this woman. She's seeing me for me. I'm just like, this is the first person to not see the scars on your face only. That's obviously very important and very memorable, but that does not mean that you're in love with this person. So anyway, DNF'd it because I'm like, what is gonna happen after this? But I do wanna pick up another Melanie Moreland and I hope her other books are not like that because that was just not it for me. <laughs> and my last book for this video is Endless Possibility by Emma Scott. Okay, so I read Rush by Emma Scott a few months ago, I think it's towards the end of 2022. Fell in love with it, I loved it so much. That one is about our hero who is blind and his romance with his like caretaker who comes to help take care of him. He's very grumpy and stoic and just hates the world. And she shows him the light. And I love, love that book. I don't want to spoil that book, but there's a chunk in the book where you're not privy to the hero's point of view and what happened like towards the end. And so this is a novella that takes place in his mind, like in his view and what happens after Rush. I thought it was beautiful. I gave it five stars because I'm a sucker for this couple and Emma Scott's writing. So I gave it five stars and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll talk about one quote in here. This one says, Charlotte, the light in my darkness, the reason I live instead of exist. You are the dawn of my every new day, my endless possibility. Anyways, there you have it. Those are the 10 books that I've read so far in April. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And please let me know also what your favorite read of April is so far. Mine is definitely The Coldest Winter. <laughs> if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a snowflake emoji in the comment section down below, even though it's April, okay? We read The Coldest Winter. 
and manifesting cold weather. Okay. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.